All right, we can get started at seven o'clock. So um, before I introduce our guests and kind of turn things over to him, I just wanted to point out since they sent an email out to faculty asking and pointed out, um, if you guys are going to be still in the college in the fall, the um, fall 21, 21 um, foundation scholarship application period is open. Um, in the news announcements for the course, there are um, there's all the information about it and even a video on how to apply if you're interested in it. Um, I know a couple of people that have gotten scholarships from, through this and um, when you're paying for your own college, sometimes it's the best way to um, get help with doing it. Uh, also for this week, uh, oops, switch over to the right one. Um, I've got a couple a couple resources out there and um, I'm sure I'll have once Jacob's done any PowerPoint or whatever he has to post um, to the course. but. One of the things I have out there is I've got a link to payscale.com um, kind of showing you the pay scale for generic video game designer, but it's a site that you can kind of use to get an idea for um, pay ranges. Um, there's also a career guide for the game industry that I know both of these links actually work as well as two videos talking about um, one video talking about um, success tips is if you wanted to get into a career as a video game programmer. And the other one is tips to secure your dream career job in the video game industry. And then the last is a link to the Tampa Games Developer Guild, which it looks like they've start, um, they've been able to start back up um, meeting again in, um, you know, with everything going on with COVID. But this is a good way to get up and um, get together if you really want to get into the um, into building games and, and working in the industry locally. Um, this is a group of people that kind of get together. It's a, a really good um, networking resource to go to go out and meet people um, that are, whether they're hobbyists or whether they're actually building, um, actively building games and involved with it and, st and stuff like this. Um, it used to be sponsored by Microsoft and had Unity partnerships. I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't um, personally been able to get over to get to um, some of the meetings um Lately, it's been because they've kind of gone gone through a couple of iterations. But um, again, it, it's a, just a good resource to check into to, if you're um, looking to try to hook up with other people locally that are in um, the game development industry. And then the last week, last um, issue before I turn it over to Jacob is our careers assi our assignment for this week, which is basically tonight. Jacob, um, one of the things he's going to be talking about is the concept of an elevator speech, which is. Um, real quick speech that you will give to someone trying to um, trying to basically attract their attention to um, possibly get for and Jacob will explain it a little bit more um, in detail on, on the purposes and stuff with it. But basically, you're going to going to write out what would be what would be your your elevator speech to to someone for for a job that you may be interested um, after finishing this class up. So with that, I am going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to turn it over to Jacob. From um, And I should introduce him more than just saying Jacob. This is, um, we have tonight Jacob Wartok, who he's actually from the um, SPC Careers Department. And he um, he's spoken, um, I think this is the third or fourth time I've had him speak to um, this particular class, kind of just kind of covering, um, covering some tips on finding on working in um, things to learn for finding um, careers within game development, because a lot of times when you're starting out fresh from college, it's not as easy as um, some of the other other professional industries, because a lot of a lot of other professional industries, it's more you find the job, turn in a resume, you interview and stuff like that. Whereas in, in the gaming industry and kind of digital media industry instead, sometimes you have to go um, – Go and, go and really work kind of freelance, more freelance style work in the beginning to to establish a um, to establish a portfolio and stuff. And um, some of the tips that he's going to give tonight, um, especially like the elevator speech and stuff, are things that will help you in the process of selling yourself as as an asset to to people who are doing the hiring or might might be a future customer or um, employer. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jacob. And uh, there we go. Let me switch to a view where I can see everybody again. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Jacob. Oh, 
and I, and I did the, uh, the the classic Zoom uh, 2020 2021 a mistake. Uh, hey, you're muted, right? So uh, <laughs> thanks for that great intro, Tim. Um, yep. uh, and yeah, thanks thanks so much for having me in this class. It's been great coming in uh, for the past few semesters now to kind of present. Uh, I know some of the students in here I have talked with in the past, and uh, which I think is great. And for those of you that that don't know me or who I am. Uh, like your professor mentioned, uh, my name is Jacob Wartok. I'm the uh, Employment and Internship Coordinator for the Seminole Campus of St. Petersburg College. Um, I've been in career development services for uh, almost eight years. Um, love it. Uh, I came into the college about 14 years ago and transitioned into this department eight years ago uh, and have since kind of just fell in love with the, this, the idea of helping students kind of carry out what their dreams are, like why you're going to college, what do you want to do after you earn your degree, and even while you're earning your degree. I mean, that's partly what we're going to talk about tonight, um, is that your your career doesn't start when you finish college, okay? Your, your career actually starts while you're in college these days, and, and we're going to talk about ways you can get connected early and start making an impact, start getting connections and networking before you graduate. You know, it's actually nowadays, if, you, if you're if waiting till you graduate to start that process, you're gonna be way behind. Uh, and it's gonna take a lot longer than you, than you think sometimes. Uh, like your professor mentioned, networking, building that portfolio, it, it takes time. And you know, and so some of the things we're gonna talk about tonight is how do I get, get started with that, right? Cause it can be daunting thinking about where, where do I start? How do I start this process? And so there's kind of three main components that I really want to focus on tonight that I think will not only help you with, uh, with this assignment that you've got for this class, but also to kind of get you started thinking about how am I going to start gaining more experience, gaining, gaining networking contacts, and in order to get into positions that eventually are going to lead me to my, your dream job, okay? Um, so we're going to talk about internships, we're going to talk about elevator speech, and we're going to talk about cleaning up your online presence. Uh, and I'm going to start with that one in just a minute, because I think that's overarching, especially for your industry, like what you're trying to do. Um, it's huge, right? I mean, your online presence, social media uh, is used throughout the gaming industry. I mean, it's, it's probably more so than almost any other industry that's out there. So I definitely want to talk about, obviously, what I'm going to teach you guys as far as cleaning up your online presence, but then how impactful that's going to have on your future within the industry that you want to get into. Um, what also helps me, if you guys are, are cool with this real quick, uh, I just want to go around the room real quick. And if you guys would mind, just, you know, state your name for me. And then also let me know uh, what you're currently playing and what your dream game company would, would be to work for. Um, and and I'll, I'll do call out since I know it's kind of hard to gonna go in order. Uh, so maybe a Samantha, since I, I know you the best, <laughs> can I give a, a, a shout out to you first to, to let me know, uh, again, state your name. Um, what you're currently playing and what your, your dream game developing company would be. Okay, I'm Samantha Simmons. I actually don't get a chance to play games very often. I would actually, I don't know if I'm even there because it looks like I'm bogging down. You froze a little bit, but I still hear you. Um, with my video. Okay. Um, I gotta hear you. Yeah, I. Um, no, yeah, I'm having problems with my internet. I'm sorry. Um, oh, that's okay. I understand. So the last part was, what am I gonna do with my life? <laughs> yeah, like what, what's your what's your dream job? Um, I would love to uh, actually uh, do concept work like uh, character concept and uh, game world and uh, do the artwork for that kind of stuff. Awesome. Thanks for, thanks for sharing that. Uh, Jared, I'll, I'll go with you next, buddy. How, how, what about you? What, do you uh, what, what are you currently playing, studying? And uh, uh, is there a dream company or job you're looking to get into? Uh, so, uh, Hold on, I kind of have to think about this, but I've been uh, kind of playing games on and off lately. I've been so bogged down with schoolwork that I don't really have the time to do that anymore, but I don't really get the chance to play video games as much as I used to, but I gen I enjoy the time that I do. Uh, so I'm currently like primary in three games right now. Uh, mm -hmm. do, like Doom Eternal, The Ancient Gods Part 2, uh, Stellaris with the new update that dropped, and a little known game called AI Dungeon 2, which is, uh, that's a interactive text adventure where the AI generates a response instead of being 
pre-programmed into the game. It's really cool, hmm. but I need to learn how to uh, format my world and world info entries before I can keep going. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I totally know what you mean. It's, it's sometimes it's hard to find time to get into our hobbies when we got school and work and whatever family, everything else that's going on in life. Uh, it's kind of hard to find that time. But, uh, you know, like what I teach in one of my classes is that it's always good to find a little downtime here and there to that unwind, relax, you know. So I think gaming is a great outlet for that. So, uh, Joaquin, how about how about you go next, buddy? I didn't I didn't uh, say what I would like to work for. Oh, I'm sorry, Jared. You're right. You also right. asked what been... I was studying, but I'm not sure what that meant. Um, oh, it just meant like, are you studying digital media um, at SPC? Are you looking to transfer on to another college university with your degree? I'm looking to transfer to another university, but uh, I, I, right now SPC seems to be working for me. Uh, I'm doing the, I'm doing digital media and intro uh, video game foundations. Okay, great. Great. I feel I have a feeling probably most of you in here might be kind of in that that track. So awesome. I know. And I did you say what, what company or dream job you'd like to have, Jared? I know I definitely want to go into video game development. I just want to be happy doing anything else. Uh, I mean, honestly, like as, as for like pre-existing companies that I would like think would be the best to work for, I kind of like dig like a I would I would kind of dig in software because uh they seem to like really understand uh, how video games work and like what makes a good video game. And they just seem like an overall fun company, be the B company that created the first person shooter genre. But- They've been around a long time, that's for sure. But honestly, I think in my case, we better to, I think we better to start an indie studio for my case, instead of working for a pre-existing company. It'll be a yeah, lot of work, yeah. but- yeah, Gary, I'm glad you mentioned that too. Uh, something that I'll kind of get into a little bit later on when we start talking about internships and stuff as well. But uh, yeah, indie developers are a great place to start, uh, especially as students coming out, trying to get connected, trying to get that experience. Because oftentimes, right, when you look like at an id software, right, or, or some other big, you know, game development firm, uh, sometimes you're looking at these and even entry level positions are saying like one year of experience, two years of experience, and you're just like, <laughs> I'm like supposed to get this, and it, and that's a very good suggestion, Jared. You know, sometimes these indie developers don't require previous experience. You know, if you've got a good knowledge base or skill set, you're willing to work hard. Sometimes you can be brought in on these smaller teams as an intern or something uh, to really kind of gain that experience. And so I'll definitely uh, chat about that more when we get into the internship component. Uh, so yeah, thanks for sharing, Jared. Good, good communication. You're welcome. All right, so we'll go to Joaquin. Uh, Joaquin. Am I pronouncing that right? Was it Joaquin? Joaquin? I'm sorry. Joaquin. Like Joaquin. Uh, the actor, like Joaquin Phoenix. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So um, right now I'm studying digital media. Mm -hmm. um, for the video game I'm playing, I am slowly going through Stardew Valley. Okay. Having fun with that. Um, and I, what I really want to do is actually get into film and animation, not as much gaming. I was mm -hmm. just taking this as, you know, something else because I feel like they overlap a lot. Um, I'd really like to um, get into animation studios like Cartoon Network or even uh, working with Netflix if I can, or mm -hmm. even owning my own independent studio one day. I would love to do that. So I'm still okay. learning about the different positions that would be available to me in that industry, but I have, I love doing all that sort of stuff. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, you're absolutely right. There's a lot of crossover, you know, um, in between those industries and, and the skill sets, obviously, that are involved with that too. Um, you know, local animation companies, uh, check out Echo Bridge Pictures. Uh, they're located in downtown St. Pete. Um, they they do take interns. Um, it's been a while since I think we've had an SPC student intern with them, but uh, yeah, local animation company. Uh, they, they've worked with um, like Netflix and, and bigger brands and stuff too, but a really cool group of people down there. Uh, I could definitely uh, talk with you sometime afterwards to help maybe get you a connection in there, okay? All uh, right, Noah. Noah, would you mind uh, sharing a little bit about you? I was just going to say thank you. That's awesome. You said Echo Bridge? Yeah, Echo Bridge Pictures. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. Yep, I'm Noah and... Uh... I guess games I've been currently playing is just like Team Fortress 2. Um, yeah, I've been playing that for like 10 years, so might as well <laughs> keep it up, right? Um, keep it going yeah. strong, man. <laughs> exactly, yeah, why not? If it's a good game, yeah. Um, I'm studying that whole digital media with the game sub plan for, mm -hmm. with SPC. 
Um, I would like to get a job somewhere in the game development scene. I just don't know exactly what specifically, but I know that I would, you know, like Jarrett said, I would, I would enjoy it and be happy with something and, you know, at least within that area of expertise. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And, you know, taking this class and, you know, continuing, obviously working with me and career services and uh, additional classes you're going to take, you'll, you'll eventually, especially if a lot of you are kind of in that mindset of like, I'm not really sure exactly what yet in, in the game industry or even, you know, multimedia industry, film, whatever that may be, animation. Um, but yeah, the, m the more time obviously you spend in college, you're going to help figure that stuff out. And the more things you're exposed to with, uh, again, other things I'm going to talk about tonight, I feel like I'm keep teasing that about, uh, you know, like networking functions and meeting with employers and, and listening in on different, you know, panels. Um, you know, Joaquin, if I can find the recording, uh, email me after this. When I mentioned Equibit Pictures, the, uh, uh, the, the owner and basically founder of it was just on a panel recently. Um, but like, you know, just great insight into the industry, into the business and stuff too. Um, if I can find the link, if not, I'll just email him and ask him for it. I can email it over to you if you're interested in watching. I'm, I'm almost 100% sure it's probably recorded. Uh, but yeah, the more you guys kind of seek out those opportunities and, and I, I just saw some of the links obviously that your professor posted in your class shell, like I highly encourage you guys, I mean, definitely digest every bit of information that gets thrown at you. <laughs> I know it can seem like a lot, like drinking from a fire hose sometimes, but uh, trust me, everything that the staff and professors at SPC are trying to do or help to get you guys ready for, for what you guys are interested in. Um, Mar Mario, how about we go with you next? All right, hi, my name is Mario, and I'm uh, pursuing a digital media degree. And I think I'm focusing more on web design because I really enjoy that. But I have enjoyed this class as well, playing games for uh, many years. So it's been a nice experience, nice learning experience. That's great. Do you, do you have a, a dream job that you're, you're, you're hoping to get to? or? Sadly, not, not any sort of a company that I can think of, but maybe freelance or maybe own my own company. Yeah, hey, <laughs> that's Someday. great, you know. <laughs> I think yeah. a lot of people that get into digital media are, are, are thinking that exact same thing. You know, um, the, I think it's tomorrow night, actually. Uh, every spring, we do a, a, a business plan and elevator pitch competition. And a lot of our students that are in the entrepreneurship program at SPC, uh, they pitch these, like, you know, business ideas and freelance projects and all these type of things. And it's kind of like a competition. Like, if you guys ever seen that show uh, Shark Tank, you guys ever watched that or, or at least have heard about it? Um, it's kind of like that, but for, for college students, you know, and so there's actually industry reps, there's like prize money. I think the, the, I can't remember what it's been. It's been, they've been doing this for like 10 years. I think the grand prize is like $5,000. And then usually they'll get like an incubator space for a year to kind of, you know, help this business or idea kind of get pushed forward. So, um, yeah, something maybe to check out. It'd be, uh, you know, especially if you're thinking freelance and, and getting into owning your own business or something. All right. Thank you. Uh, okay, Mike. Hi there. My name is uh, Michael Shabrowski. I'm currently looking into either going into a, um, I'm kind of treading the waters on uh, design and uh, like game art, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm not sure exactly what, like, if, like, how well I can get into coding and all that, but I'll just find that out as I go more along. But I'm definitely more interested in the uh, art aspect as of now. Um, once I, uh, you know, get my degree and get out there, I definitely want to, I'll definitely just try, like, going into, like, either doing some freelance work with uh, uni or the like, or maybe get into um, some of the local studios here. Like, I know there's a EA and the um, the Adventure Quest studio. I'm not sure how well they, um, how well they take on interns or new hires, but figure I'd take a shot at it if I were to get if I were to shoot like above and beyond I'd definitely love to work on a uh, Resident Evil game over with Alpha Team or Capcom mm. that's probably uh, I love that series so much and I would definitely love to be on the team one day that's cool yeah they got a big release coming up soon don't they oh yeah I'm really excited <laughs> Very right, cool. after, right after this semester ends too <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and just a quick response to the two companies mentioned earlier. Uh, yeah, but they both do internships. Um, what I'm going to mention too, uh, specifically with those companies, they don't advertise a lot. And that's partly mm -hmm. what we're going to talk about when we get into that elevator speech. Uh, and, and 
why it's gonna be really important for you guys because a lot of these studios, the big ones do, right? The big ones are gonna be publishing on their website, you know, like the Microsoft, the Electronic Arts, you know, Activision, places like that. Oftentimes they post their their internships right on their website or they may advertise them through Indeed and stuff. And a lot of places don't though, especially indie developers, smaller companies. So learning how to kind of sell yourself, like how to reach out and inquire um, or is really gonna be, in, you know, extremely instrumental as far as helping you guys get your foot in the door. And so that's partly what we're going to talk about tonight is how to craft that elevator speech, how to break the ice so you can ask for the things that, that you want. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned some of that, Mike. And so we can, we can talk about that more in just a little bit. Uh, let's kind of finish up with our last couple of students here. So, uh, Anthony, why don't uh, you go next, bud? Uh, if you're, you're on mute if you're talking, Anthony. I can't tell. Maybe Anthony had to step away for a second. Catherine, are you there? Do you want to go ahead? You're on mute too if you're talking. Okay. Well, we'll we'll get started. I know maybe they might have stepped away for a second here. So, uh, and I definitely want to make sure we have enough time to kind of get through everything I want to talk to you guys about. So. Um, first, I want to I want to kind of start with the cleaning up the online presence because I think that's a, an important one to kind of start with. Uh, so I do have a presentation. I am going to share my screen here in a minute. Um, however, I do would, or would love to make this conversational. So it's not just me being a, like a talking head on the screen, uh, pushing information to you guys. So if you have comments at any point, feel free to chime in. Questions, um, thoughts, you want more explanation on something too? I mean, I'm happy to kind of share sometimes. I know I can kind of just get on a roll and I'll just start talking and talking. So please feel free to stop me if you want more clarification on something or something's not clear, or if you just have something to add, I'd love love to hear it. Um, I know in, in my class that I teach, I, I, I love the interruptions. Uh, when a student wants to chime in with a personal story or, or a side note, I feel like that just helps with the learning process. You know, I think that helps kind of uh, bring the information home. So, so I'm definitely gonna share my own experiences while I talk about some of these things too, um, believe it or not. And a lifetime ago, I actually interned for a video game company. Uh, so my my story is not unique, but how I got it is a lot of what I'm going to be teaching you guys tonight. So these are practices that I actually did myself when I was in college, and now it's come full circle, and I'm now teaching these things to you guys. So, um, uh, but yeah, to start with the clean up line presence, go ahead. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. I'm going to just pull up my presentation. And I'll be kind of talking through it as, as I go. And, and just let me know real quick, can you guys uh, see my screen okay? Yeah, head nod. Thank you, Jared. Okay, let's make sure I can share my sound. <clears throat> okay. Perfect. All right. So let me go ahead and get started here. Okay. Um, you guys, I know you guys are all familiar with social media, right? It's, not, it's nothing new. It's been around for a long time. Um, but what are, some of the things that we're really going to focus on here is how social media can not only help you, but it can also really hurt you, okay? Um, one of the first things that anybody does nowadays when you apply for a position, when you reach out by email to ask for an internship or some kind of opportunity, is that they're going to Google you. Right, they're, they're gonna look you up and kind of just see who you are. They're gonna try to get to know you by looking at the things that maybe they can find on the internet. Um, so we're gonna talk about the different social media sites you guys are using. We're gonna talk about the term digital dirt and what does that mean? Uh, but before we kind of get into all that, I'm gonna do, uh, <laughs> I'm laughing at myself because I created this video about a year ago and I'm gonna show it to you guys right now. Um, it's a little cheesy. But I think you guys will have fun watching it. So let me go ahead and play this real quick. Hey guys, this is Jacob. And Teresa. From your career team, we want to talk to you about digital dirt. Did you know that over 70% of employers will use social media to screen candidates during the hiring process? Uh, yeah, because we Google searched you when we hired you. <laughs> so what does that mean for you? Time to start cleaning. Before we show you how to clean up your digital dirt, it's important to explore what defines digital dirt. Digital dirt is a negative online reputation, something negative connected to your name online that others can easily find. 
like drunken photos, extreme rants on boards, complaints from exes, or even talking smack about your boss. Ooh, did you see that last one? That was bad. So you found some digital dirt. Where do you go from here? Start by looking at your privacy settings. Remember that post five years ago? Yeah, we don't either, but if it was set to public, it is visible until you delete it or change your settings. Remember, it is visible forever. Forever. What was that? See a lot, the movie. Don't you get it? No. Okay, moving on. Make sure you go back and delete and untag any inappropriate posts, pictures, or comments on all social media platforms. Yes, MySpace too, Teresa. Take some time to do some investigative work on yourself. Google, Bing, and Yahoo are just so Uh, did anyone else have their video stop? Remember, you can represent your brand in a. Is there a little bit of lag there? Are we, am I getting a little bit of a slowdown? Yeah, wow. it, it stops a little bit. Right now, it stopped for me. I'm did sure his video, else. like, did his camera feed stop? Because he looks frozen in place. Am I frozen? Uh, yeah. And uh, the video looks frozen too. Okay, I paused the video. <clears throat> that just maybe I'm maybe I'm eating up too much bandwidth right now. Um, okay, well I'll, I'll skip the video. <laughs> I think you guys are getting kind of the gist of what I'm getting to at here is that you know your brand is important when it comes time to start selling yourselves. Okay, when it comes time to start interacting with employers, start reaching out through social media to eventually what we're going to talk about next about that elevator speech. When you come time to use that, people are going to be looking at what you're representing yourself with online. Um, and social media, for as many things that it does great, right? You know, connecting people and sharing stories and information. I think we've seen over the last few. We lost your audio for a second. All right, let me see if I can close some things down here on my side. Maybe I'm just using too much bandwidth. Uh, am I back? Am I unfrozen? The video is still frozen, but we've got your audio back. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll turn off my my video feed just for. Well. All right, can you see my screen if I'm advancing this? Oops, it is. The whole computer looks like it's slowing down right now. Yeah, we're, still, we're seeing the screen. It's just you're on the, in the Zoom part, your video's frozen. Have you tried turning your camera off and on again? Yeah, let me, hear, let me just stop sharing for a second here. I was going to say kind of while we're waiting for Jacob, I can tell you that um, digital dirt is something um, actually the company I work for, they've um, backed off on searching because they um, had a couple um, hiring managers, managers get a little too aggressive with it. So they really don't, um, they don't encourage hiring managers um, to do that anymore. However, I can tell you that digital dirt not only can help you hurt, hurt you in, um, going for um going for employment but just can kind of hurt you in general like um i was in a fairly bad car accident two years ago and as we're still um going through all the legal proceedings afterwards i have anything that's out there that that i thought was detrimental yet in my deposition there was three or four posts that they managed to pull up to to try to use against us but i mean they weren't you know anything like that and it's just it's something that if you're looking to have possibly have to sell yourself out there potentially you need to be aware of what you have out there um on all the social media platforms even if it's something that you haven't used in five ten years because people can people that want to look will look and find it if you want me to be honest it sounds really unethical you know just the idea that like they could just pull up something from 10 years ago, let's say, and hold that against you. I don't think that, that, that doesn't sound fair. We should stop that, but 
I'm used to that. I'm used to having that done every every ten every 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 five years, and because it's part of with my main job having a security clearance that they have to go back. Um, they go back initially ten years, and if they find anything in, anything in that ten years, they will go back further because they want to make sure that I can be trustworthy with a clearance. So. And it looks like we lost Jacob, so I'm watching for him to sign back on in a few seconds. Hey guys, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. My Zoom decided to just uh, <laughs> cut out for a second there. So uh, what I'm going to do, just because I don't want to have that happen again, um, I'm going to leave my video off. If that's right with you guys, I am going to try to share my screen here again. But hopefully that'll cut down on any issues here. We can see your screen, or at least I can. Awesome, perfect. Okay, so I think thanks so much for kind of stepping in there and kind of kind of chatting about this stuff too. Um, yeah, it's you know with with your online presence, you know you just have to be careful. I think sometimes about what you're posting and thinking about that stuff because uh, digital dirt is that sort of negative online reputation, right? So if you're somebody that's just you know, and, and trust me, I'm sure you guys have seen it, right? You probably have watched the YouTube video and then scroll down to the comments sometimes and seen just the nasty that sometimes that can come out or, or been on Twitter uh, and, and seen comments from someone's post, you know, those are things that if it's tied to your name can definitely come back and bite you. Okay. Um, yeah. Not, not every, you know, employer is going to, you know, uh, dig super deep, but a lot of places uh, do take that really seriously, especially if they have a very strong brand. You know, I have I had a student a couple of years ago that applied for a position at Target um, and then, you know, Two days basically after he got hired was let go based off of things he was posting on Twitter, you know, and that he, those were his views. Obviously, he has a right to those views and, and, and his opinion and everything, but Target felt that it didn't represent the, their brand. And so unfortunately, they they had to let him go. Um, so he just said it's, it's about really about being careful. Okay. And oftentimes thinking, you know, <laughs> you see something you really just want to, rep, you know, respond on hitting those breaks, you know, and maybe uh, give it overnight, give it an hour, take it a little time to think about it uh, before you come back and, and kind of post post that uh, that comment or that suggestion or something that, that may not go over as well as you think it might. Um, and so one of the things obviously you can do to help protect yourself too, if you are someone obviously that likes to engage heavily on social media is make sure your privacy settings are in check, okay? Uh, that's one of the first things I do when I'm talking with students, you know, they're, they're starting a job hunt, uh, it's like, yeah, make sure that, you know, if you're using Facebook, that you make it so people have to ask your approval if, they, if you're, they're going to tag you in something, right? And make sure your Instagram accounts are locked down so people can't just, you know, scroll on your feed and see pictures and things of stuff that maybe you want them to see. Now, if you're the type of person that says, hey, I'm trying to develop my brand and I want people to see what I'm posting, I want people to see my Instagram account because I'm uploading a lot of artwork and Things that I'm doing, then then yeah, you know, and I'm going to talk about that in just a second. That you can really use social media to your benefit as well too. Um, but make sure, yeah, you're really in control of these social media platforms. Um, you know, I'm not suggesting that you go out, to, you need to go out there and, and have like two accounts, right? Like one that's, you know, your, your you know personal account that has your name attached to it, and then one that's maybe more of a fun account. You don't have to go to that extreme. I mean, there are people that do that. Um, but again, if you are just using one account and people are going to be seeing it. Um, especially in the game industry, because like I said, this this social media is used so much, whether it's YouTube or Twitch or, uh, again, Twitter. I mean, Twitter is probably one of the biggest social media platforms that's used by game developers. Uh, I mean, they will literally talk to each other directly on there, even though they know it's open and, and out there for the public to view. But it can also be a fantastic platform for you guys to network and reach out and ask questions. Um, I reached out, this is like about two weeks, weeks ago, so this is a true story. Uh, a program manager uh, with Xbox, all right? So um, just had a question. I saw something that she had posted and her DMs were open. <laughs> so I, I sent her a message and within like 10 minutes got a response. And, you know, that's 
one of the few things that social, you know, social media, where you can actually get in touch with people that you normally probably would never had a chance to get in touch with before. Or, you know, you're kind of blindly sending something through email in the hopes that they maybe re respond or they see it. So social media can be a great way to get in touch with people. Uh, but going just real quick back to the presentation that, okay, maybe you did find digital term, right? Maybe you Googled yourself and you're like, okay, I see some stuff out on social media that I don't want people to see. What, do I, what am I supposed to do now? Well, there's ways you can help get rid of that, right? I, obviously, your, your privacy settings, going in there and checking that stuff. Um, also, making sure that the information that you put out going forward, you know, is more in line with what you want other people to see or view yourself as. Um, but things like creating additional social media content that will help push bad content down. Um, your LinkedIn profile, right? That's something that I, I encourage all students to create. Uh, it's a great way to have a professional social media service that's out there. Uh, so many employers that I talk with are, are you know, almost requiring that students have these this day. It doesn't mean you, you have to, but it really just shows people that you're professional when you have a professional platform that you are connecting on, that you're posting information to, that maybe you have your resume uploaded on. So it really does help your chances, especially a student, you know, in college, coming out of college, to do everything you can to make those first impressions, okay? So um, uploading pictures. You can upload pictures to Google Images and make them public. If there's, you know, pictures of you volunteering somewhere, uh, or you got a picture taken of you at a networking function, you want to post that, or maybe uh, dress professionally for an interview or a mock interview or something. You can have those images out there. So when people again Google search you, you're dictating to them what you want them to see. Uh, this helps push negative content down, but it also helps you get your name out there and, and make people view things that you want them to see. Okay, just for the sake of time, I'm going to skip over this video and just obviously to <laughs> save bandwidth and stuff too. Uh, but Mark Cuban did a, a great uh, interview about social media a couple years ago. And really a lot of things that I'm talking about now he mentions in there and how uh, posts just live forever, right? And something that you might have said, did or comment on, you know, five years ago is, is still out there. And I'm not saying every single employer that you, you know, that you apply to a position with is going to go back that far, but sometimes they do. Okay. Uh, and you don't know whether or not the, the people that you're interviewing with are going to do that. Uh, so I always recommend, yeah, comb if you're, if you're leaving your, your content non-private, right. So people can just go in there and view it, go back and look at old posts, right. I mean, go back and look at things. I mean, you guys probably heard the story about James Gunn, right. With, with Disney and, and how he posted things and got called out for it. And then, I mean, a whole just, you know, storm of stuff happened because of that. Um, and, you know, that was like six or seven years ago. He's a totally different person now, you know, and he realized what he did wasn't that maybe the right thing at the right time. Regardless, you know, again, those are things that maybe, again, people can find when they start searching for, for stuff on social media there. Okay. So just to kind of recap real quick, yeah, social media obviously is, can, can be a great asset to you. And like I said, there's so many students that I've seen use social media over the last few years really to their benefit into getting contacts with people they, again, maybe normally would not have been in contact with. I've seen students get internships based off of communication they've had through people on social media, um, not just, you know, Twitter, but through through other means as well, too. There's a great way to get recognized, to get noticed. Um, again, if you are an artist and, and looking to find places for your art to be seen, social media is going to be a phenomenal place for you to do that. Uh, you know, I encourage you guys to create online portfolios, but you can definitely advertise your work through other spaces, through Twitter, through Instagram, you know, Facebook. I mean, there's so many different avenues now for you guys to be sharing uh, your creativity uh, and really using that to your benefit to get noticed. Okay, so let me go ahead and stop sharing for a second here. Um, and so that, you know, basically what I was, was what I'm saying there uh, about cleaning up your online presence brings me to the next point, which is the one I, what I want to talk about next is the elevator speech. Okay. So once you have your social media, like under control, right? So you've got everything where if someone, you know, looks you up, Google searches you, we're, we're telling the brand, we're telling the story that we want them to hear and want them to see. So now that you can take that time now to reach out, you can take that time to do your elevator speech. Uh, and, and so I'm going to bring up another presentation that I've got here, um, just so you've got some visuals to kind of go along with, uh, since you can't really see me talking right now, uh, some visuals to kind of go along with what I'm saying, okay? So let me go ahead and do the same thing again here. All 
Okay, and, and so before I start with this, can anybody tell me where they think the, ele the term elevator speech came from? Samantha, yeah. Um, it needs to be brief enough to be able to pitch it on an elevator ride. Perfect, couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> um, yeah, really that, that expression, yeah, just came from like, okay, yeah, you're, you're in the elevator, the CEO of the company walks in, you've got maybe 30 seconds to pitch this idea to them. So um, yeah, excellent answer there. It, it really is just about, um, you know, crafting this really short, concise, but impactful statement. And, and what we're really referring to is not like an idea necessarily, but about who you are. Um, kind of like what we, a little bit what we did at the beginning of this class, you know, tell me a little bit about who you are, what you're studying, what you're doing, what you're looking to, to kind of get out of college, where eventually you're trying to get into for a career. Um, and there's a lot of different ways you can create one, a lot of different ways you can use one. Uh, and again, I'm gonna kind of skip my little videos that I've got embedded here, uh, just because it's clearly that I've got some internet issues going on. Um, but basically what you're gonna be seeing in these videos is, is the same type of talking points I'm gonna talk about here in just a second. Uh, and that's just how impactful your elevator speech can be. And, and what this bad elevator speech will show is a lot of ums and likes and lack of eye contact and just really not sure about what you're gonna say. Cause I can almost guarantee you almost anytime you interact with somebody, whether it's an interview, whether it's meeting somebody at a networking function or you're just composing an email to send someone or, or a tweet, right? <laughs> or some kind of social media post, you need to have an idea of what you wanna say uh, because otherwise it just comes across as unprofessional. And first impressions are lasting impressions. And sometimes you will completely shoot yourself in the foot if you have that really bad first impression. And so that's partly what you know I do with in career services is help you guys have that good first impression. Uh, that's the same thing your professor is doing with this class by making you guys create an elevator speech and starting to practice that stuff because not all this just comes second nature. Some people are obviously really good at it and they can just talk about themselves right off the bat and other people are a little bit more shy, right? A little bit more reserved. So having an idea of what you want to say is helpful. Yeah, Jared, did you have a question? Oh, no, I was actually raising my hand in response like to say, that, yeah, I'm that shy person. <laughs> I think I think we all were right, especially at one point. You know, it's it's not something that usually comes second nature. And um, so, what we're going to talk about is sort of how we can make it easy. Uh, and there's actually something I'm going to um, in just a minute here. I'm going to upload into the chat, and and uh, Professor Scott, I'll send it to you as well. So if you want to upload it into your shell, um, it's kind of like a little uh, fill in the blank script that sometimes helps students get started with writing that elevator speech. Um, but before we get to that part, it's good to sort of break it down. Okay, so like I mentioned before, and Samantha mentioned too, this needs to be short, it needs to be concise, right? 30 to 60 seconds is typically what an elevator speech consists of. Uh, because that's, to be honest, that's what our, our average attention spans, right? We're gonna start losing interest if people go on for too long. Uh, I can tell you when I'm conducting interviews at the college, uh, usually one of the first questions I ask in the interview uh, is, tell me about yourself. And if their person's going on for five minutes, they've lost me. <laughs> they may have some interesting stories to tell, but it's way too long. It's just way too long. Uh, anywhere from 30 to 60 seconds is obviously typically what I'm looking for. Uh, and, and part of what that tells me is, is that they plan, right? They're, they plan to tell me these things. Uh, so they're really going to focus on the meat and potatoes. What do I want to hear? What's going to be relevant to what I'm looking for? Um, and so, yeah, I mean, Social media, right? It's all bite-sized information these days too, right? So if you want to look at it in 30 to 60 seconds, I mean, you're, we're constantly scrolling through Twitter, through YouTube, through social media. What grabs our attention are things that are impactful, things that are relevant, and sometimes obviously visually <laughs> pleasing as well too. Um, but there's a lot of different times you're going to be using this elevator speech. And that's why we, we want to teach it to students early. It might not be necessarily just for an interview. It might be specifically just at a job fair. It could be a new class you're taking this summer or this fall. And the first day of class, your professor says, hey, Samantha, hey, Mike, tell me about yourself, you know? And it, this gives you an opportunity to make a good impression with your professor and talk about things that, that could be relevant to, to them and to the class. Um, but you'll also use it when, you know, maybe <laughs> talking with your grandparents, 
you know, hey, what have you been up to lately? You know, or or maybe you're meeting the significant other of your boyfriend or girlfriend, right? Or their parents. Uh, and they're just like, hey, so you go to St. Petersburg College. What do you what are you studying? Again, and being able comfortable to talk about yourself. It's not something that we do every day. So it's definitely it's about kind of training your brain to really start thinking about, okay, how do I start talking about myself? How do I break the ice? Because I guarantee you, that's what the employers are looking for. They're looking for that confidence that you can talk about yourself. Um, and when you see on the screen here, it says clear, avoid fancy phrases. We don't want to overcomplicate it, right? We don't want to use a bunch of acronyms and things that just make us sound really fancy. They're we're really, they're looking for a conversation. And the more conversational you can make it, the more relaxed, that's where things will take off, you know? Um, and typically, you know, when I, when I speak with employers regarding like our job fairs and stuff, that's often the, what they're looking for. If you can break the ice, if you can be that person that walks over to their table or, or virtual booth these days uh, and kind of just say, hi, my name is Jacob. I'm a student at uh, St. Petersburg College. Uh, your, your, your business looks, sounds familiar, but I don't really know what you guys do. Can you tell me more about who you are? That just quick, even 15 seconds, what I just did right there is enough to break the ice that gets them talking and gets you talking and it just will flow naturally sometimes from there. Um, but sometimes they're gonna want more. They're gonna say, oh, that's great. You go to St. Petersburg College. What are you studying? Tell me about yourself. And then that's where you wanna have that 30 to 60 seconds, you know, maybe a short story that you're going to tell them about why you started at SPC. Why are you studying the major that you're studying? Um, give it, give it some, some, a call to action, give it a hook, you know, maybe uh, let them know that, yeah, I'm, I'm finishing up my, my program in digital media and I'm really starting to look for internship opportunities. I, uh, I came to this event to hopefully network and, and maybe meet someone like you that might have an internship opportunity you could uh, tell me about. Uh, so just something quick and easy like that. I know I make it sound easy because I mean, I've been doing this for a long time, but that's what I'm going to help you guys with tonight and also going forward. Um, when you submit your elevator speech to the to this class as an assignment, you guys can please follow up with me later on if you want to practice it, hone it, uh, let me review it too and, and get some feedback. So it's definitely something I would love to kind of work with you guys on. Um, but when you're starting to craft it, like I said, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna send a document to your professor that he can upload to kind of help you with this process. But some of the things to be thinking about, right, is, is almost like an outline. Like just like you're writing a paper, what do I wanna have in here? What components do I wanna have? Uh, my, obviously my name and my degree, um, maybe uh, you know past accomplishments, if you just were recently offered some kind of award or some kind of recognition. I mean, those are things definitely to highlight and talk about too. Uh, and I know sometimes it can seem like you're boasting or like you're conceited or something like that, but really, no, it comes back to confidence. There's that fine line of being, you know, kind of this uh, overconfident person or just being, hey, I'm, I'm a student. I'm really excited about the things I'm doing and accomplishing, and I want to share that with people. So I think that stuff is great. Um, and then obviously, you know, how this affects or relates to your listener. So depending on the situation you're in, your elevator speech is going to change, right? So the script you may submit for this class is great. You're going to have that script, but now we may need to tweak it. We may need to adjust it depending on what, you know, uh, circumstance you find yourself in to use it. And so what you're going to see on the screen right now is what I'm going to be sending to your professor in a document format. Uh, and that's just kind of, again, this is a loose script. It might not apply directly to everybody. So you, I would say don't probably all just submit this as your assignment. Um, but this is something to help you get started, right? Hello, my name is blank and I'm completing a major or recently graduated with a degree in blank at St. Petersburg College. This is a, a, a just a general script. It's not something that I would say memorize it and sound like a robot. It's something to help get you thinking about what I want to talk about. What are some of my main talking points that I want to include, right? Uh, could you tell me more about like this last you know sentence on here? Could you tell me more about your company? Or can you tell me more about the job or internship you have posted? Um, and then, yeah, at the end, especially if it's in person, asking for that business card already, asking for a way for you to follow up with them. Um, I can't tell you enough how important that part of it is as well, okay? Is that follow-up, you know, you've had this great first impression with them. You had a great conversation. Now we got to follow up, right? Send them an email, uh, give them a call. They said, hey, we had a great conversation today. Why don't you call me tomorrow and we can talk some more about this internship, okay? Make sure you have a way to contact them. Make sure you've got their phone number or their email address. Um, Follow-up is huge, especially if you've had that great first impression. Okay, uh, and so like I said, there are, I can, and, and Professor, what I can do too, I can send you these presentations as well. So if you want to upload them into your, your course shell too, uh, you're welcome to do that. So I'll, I'll make sure you get a, a copies of these.
Oh, you might be muted. The presentation for the elevator speech, is that the same as last year? Um, one the, cause I noticed the title on it was, is the same. Yep, it should be the same one as last year. I don't think I've, I've changed anything in it from then, since then, so. Then I, ha then I have last year's and I've actually, I just, I just posted it up into our shell. Perfect, all right, great, thanks. Okay, uh, any questions about the elevator speech? I know you guys didn't get to see some of the videos and stuff that are in there, but uh, as far as the content and material that I went over, any, any questions or thoughts or concerns about any of that stuff? Yeah, Samantha. Is there a point where you're, um, where you just shouldn't cross a line about being, you know, confident <laughs> or assertive? Um, you know, sometimes I think you can, you can kind of read the room sometimes a little bit and sometimes that comes with practice and stuff too, is being able to, to see when <laughs> something may be too much. But to be honest with you, I think when you know, when you identify yourself as a student, I think it's okay to be overly proud of the things that you're accomplishing and doing, you know, um, you know, you're, you're right. There are sometimes a fine line between seeming confident and then also seeming a little too arrogant. But I think that partly comes off in your tone, your facial expressions and stuff too, which I know sometimes is harder via Zoom and online platforms, but you'd be surprised just like a smile on your face while you're talking about yourself uh, really can just kind of help with, with the content you're delivering, you know? And so I think that's important to mention. I'm glad you kind of brought that up because, you know, um, first impressions are not only just what we say, but how our body language is, right? And how we act. Uh, and, and some of the times that can tell a completely different story than what's coming out of our mouths, you know? Uh, especially if we're nervous or again, if we're over maybe, you know, confident or arrogant or something like that too. Uh, so that's why you typically, you know, you don't want to sit or stand with like, you know, your arms crossed or folded, um, or hands in your pockets or something like that. Um, it's okay to, I, I talk with my hands a lot. So sometimes it's okay, you know, to do that and stuff too. Um, but yeah, that, that's where I think it comes partly with the practice. You know, one, it's one thing to, to craft your elevator speech, but then practicing it, you know, practicing it. Obviously you can record yourself these days. It's super easy to record yourself and kind of play it back and say, hey, how does that sound? Um, to have obviously your professor for this class or me take a look at it down the road too and say, hey, what do you, what do you think of this? You know, because again, things you send me, whether, whether it's your resume, whether we do a mock interview, whether it's an elevator speech, there's no judgment that's coming with that stuff. Okay, like we're here to help you guys improve. And so the first version that you may send to us, probably not going to be the end version, right? We're going to refine it. We're going to help, you know, hone it and stuff too. So um, never feel ashamed and like, or embarrassed. of like, oh, I don't like what I created. I don't want them to look at it because that's part of the learning process. And that's what we want to help you guys with. So uh, I, I get that a lot with students, you know, like, oh, they're, they're, they're nervous about, you know, scheduling a mock interview with me or uh, sending me like an elevator speech because they're, they, they're worried about criticism, you know? And, and I think like, yeah, I may, I may be critical, but it's going to be constructive. Okay. And so I'm, I'm always going to be just in your best interest trying to help you guys put your best foot forward. Cause right. Cause I, I don't want you guys going out there and, and talking with employers and not feeling confident or, or maybe saying the wrong things or something like that too. You know, I want to definitely try to set you guys up for success with that, which, uh, which definitely kind of segues into my, my next thing I'm going to show you guys, which is really to kind of start talking about internships. But before I jump into that, was there any, any other questions or comments about, um, the elevator speech, the cleaning up your online presence. Okay, okay well, let me go ahead and share my screen again here. And, and now what I wanna do is I wanna, I wanna talk to you guys about internships and kind of bring it full circle when I was talking about elevator speech and you know networking and um, you know, cleaning up your online presence and how that by honing some of those things, it can help you guys land the internships that you want to get. Okay. And so, like I mentioned at the beginning of class, how I had a stint of working in the gaming industry uh, as an intern, I was a senior at the University of South Florida. And I knew that I needed to get more experience besides the typical retail and restaurant positions that I had. I mean, again, those don't get me wrong, those are great college jobs. They're obviously flexible school schedules. Uh, when I worked in restaurants, you know, they obviously paid pretty good for the number of hours that I worked. Um, but I knew when I was getting closer to finishing my degree is like, hey, I, I probably need to get something that's maybe a little bit more 
aligned with maybe what I want to be doing or some kind of office work or something that was going to help my, my resume, help it stand out maybe a little bit more. Uh, and at the time, I really, to be honest with you guys, I didn't have a clear idea of exactly what I wanted to do. Um, you know, uh, like many students, you know, uh, I was just like unsure. I know I was going to school and finishing up a degree, but I was really not sure exactly what I was going to do with it. And I'd always had a, a, an interest in the gaming industry. I thought it was a really cool industry. It'd be a fun one to work for. But I didn't go to school for digital media. I wasn't going to school if I didn't have any art abilities. <laughs> um, you know, wasn't really, you know, super involved with like game development. But I was good at communications. You know, uh, I thought maybe public relations. I thought maybe getting into something like that would, would be great. And uh, maybe work with a communications team with a game company. And there was a game company based out of Sarasota at the time that was one of the few game companies in the, in the area. Um, and what I did is reach out to them through email. And what I did was I crafted an elevator speech and put it into an email. And, and basically just to say, hi, I'm a student at the University of South Florida, uh, earning my bachelor degree. I have about a semester, a semester and a half. I think I had two semesters left when I did these emails. Um, and, you know, I've been, in fact, I've been following your company. I've seen a lot of press about it, you know, recently. Uh, and we're just curious if your company offers internships. Not, I hadn't seen anything on their website and nothing was posted on any job engines or anything. So I just found about five people's names <laughs> on their directory and just emailed all five of them. Um, separately, I might add, I didn't, I didn't put all of them, all five of them in an email because I can tell you one thing that's usually not a good indicator is that everybody's going to think someone else is going to respond. Okay, so don't do group emails when you email people. Um, because they're all probably looking at, hey, did you respond to this? Did you respond? Oh, I'm sure someone responded to this. Uh, so email people individually. Okay, so when you're crafting your elevator speech and you're going to send that to maybe somebody um, in, through an email, again, you can send that pretty much that same elevator speech. Again, those same five people, I emailed them all individually, sent that same elevator speech I just kind of mentioned to all five of them. From four of them, I never heard anything back. Not an email, not a phone call, not even just say, hey, thanks, got your email. No, nope, we're not doing internships now. But I heard back from one, and that's all it took. Uh, the one person that emailed me back says, hey, we've never done internships before. We definitely are interested. How do we get started? <laughs> and I was like, uh, well, I was hoping you could tell me that since I'm a student and I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but we figured it out together. Uh, and it was an amazing opportunity. I still remember this to this day. I still tell stories about it. Um, Partly because obviously it didn't lead to a career in game development for me, but what I learned from that internship and the connections that I got, uh, I had letters of recommendation, references that helped me land my my uh, <laughs> my, my big boy job after that, <laughs> which was uh, which was great, you know. Uh, and funny enough, I had nothing to do with with gaming, but what I learned there was actually I was working with one of the VPs uh, as an intern directly for him. And I was, at the time, broadband was really coming on the scene. I know this kind of dates myself a lot here, but, uh, and I was working a lot with local cable companies, phone companies, not just here in the area, but across the United States to kind of figure out what their game plan was for broadband. Um, and so it was, a, it was a lot of cold calling on my part. It was a lot of uh, Excel spreadsheet management, um, but I just, I knew what the company's vision was and I was so just behind it. Uh, and it just was really cool. Um, but long story short, the internship is what really gave me insight and really gave me sort of a direction as far as what I wanted to do afterwards. Uh, and funny enough, you know, come full circle, uh, part of my role in that internship was the development of their internship program. So I helped that company develop their internship program. Uh, I was the first intern brought on there. During my time as an intern there, we brought on four more interns. I wrote their internship descriptions. <laughs> I worked with different departments to figure out what their needs were, wrote descriptions for their positions, and helped them get interns. <laughs> and so, yeah, we, we fast forward X number of years later. I won't say exactly how many, and that's exactly kind of what I do now for the college. Uh, I work with employers, obviously, to help them develop their internship programs and help students like you guys get connected with those. Um, so, yeah, long story short, this really helped pay off for me. Um, and so what I want to talk to you guys about is, is why it's going to be important for you guys to try to do the same thing, okay? And, and, and be smarter than I was at the time. Don't, don't wait till your last year. Don't wait till the last semester before you graduate to try to do an internship. 
it's, it's great if you can, I'm not saying it's always possible to try to do multiple internships, okay? Um, try to get multiple experience opportunities. And again, that's not the, the right path for everybody, but the more people you meet, the more people that you network with and the more people that you work with, the more opportunities are gonna present themselves to you. You're gonna have more opportunities to, to meet the right people that are gonna connect you with the right next thing. And your first internship may not be the dream internship. It may not be that dream position that's gonna land you your future career, but it's gonna be a stepping stone into the next thing and then the next thing and then the next thing. So it can really be the catalyst to help get you guys moving. Um, and an internship too is not just about the job. It's really about learning. You know, um, what you see on the screen here, um, and this gentleman's name is Tate. He was actually a student at St. Petersburg College while he was finishing up his AA degree. He did an internship with NASA. Uh, he since went on to do a second internship with NASA and now he actually works there full time. Uh, but those internships got him his foot in the door. You know, they, they really helped him solidify. And it was funny, you know, at the time when he told me he was applying to NASA as an AA degree seeking student, I was just kind of like in the back of my mind, good luck. <laughs> you know, I'm like, that's a hard place to get into. But he was determined. He crafted a, a great resume, a cover letter. He really had some good ref letters of recommendation from professors. He was a hardworking student and he did a fantastic job of landing that first internship. Um, and, and so nothing's impossible. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities you guys can get just by reaching out, just by doing the things that these employers are looking for. Um, and so internships can just be incredibly beneficial, not just from the people and the networking opportunities, but just some learning opportunities you'll get there. Some people will decide after they do an internship that that's not the field that they actually wanted to do. Now, hopefully we can decide before then, so you guys aren't wasting a lot of time, energy, and money going to school for something you're not really interested in. But what I mean by that is sometimes people will go, and like I mentioned earlier, maybe they're thinking about a career in public relations and they feel like, okay, well, I don't want to be doing this part of PR, right? Or somebody that's thinking game development and once they get into a studio realizes, wow, okay, I don't want to do anything in, in coding, right? Maybe programming is not exactly what I want to be doing. Uh, maybe I am more interested in art, maybe, uh, maybe graphic design, maybe working for their marketing team versus the actual working on the game part. You know, when I hear the word game developer, that encompasses everything at the studio. You know, just because you may not be that person designing the game itself or coding the levels or providing art assets, if you work for a game company, you are a game developer, okay? Every single person is a part of that team. Yeah, Jared. Oh, I'm sorry if I just want to interrupt because I had like something funny to share about like what you just said because uh, I was like talking to my uncle like uh, who uh, he's, he's like a programmer about like game development and he seemed not to understand that fact that like everyone who works in the studio is a developer uh, regardless of what your job actually is and I had to explain that to him. It was like it was like talking to a brick wall until then. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think to maybe some people, obviously, they think, you know, if you're not directly, obviously, putting parts into the game itself, that you're not part of the, the team, but uh, it's totally opposite, you know. Yeah, Jared, did you have something else? Yeah, I was just, I was thinking, I think I remember, like, he thought, like, the developers were the ones doing the programming of a game, but those are programmers, as the name implies, Yeah. right? I, I think that's that's a common, maybe, misconception, Um you know, for years that, that was typically right. That was mostly what people thought of when you think of game development as the people that are programming the game. And, you know, nowadays, if you look at a, a uh, you know, position descriptions for a game company, I mean, it's, you know, it's all across the board. And sometimes it can be very confusing, <laughs> right? Exactly of what, what a person does what at a, at a particular studio and not just even the game development industry. I mean, we talked earlier about animation. We talked earlier about, you know, the film industry and stuff too. I think when it comes to technology jobs in the industry, uh, there's a lot of gray area as far as that, and a lot of crossover of disciplines too, um, of you know being skilled. You know, I, I, I know I work when I work with students in our graphic design and video production. Uh, when they go out and start looking at internships and job opportunities, it's a lot of a lot of places are expecting like a jack of all trades nowadays. You know, like being able to be a little bit of skilled in multiple areas. Um, doesn't mean you have to be an expert in every area, but but kind of having that knowledge base. Um, earlier today, our director of um, or, or excuse me, not director, but social media manager for the college, Alexa Heinrich, uh, did a presentation on um, kind of a lot of what we're talking about tonight about social media and, you know, how to effectively use that stuff. And, you know, she mentions that, you know, her title, social media manager, 
he says, yeah, I got I to gotta do a little bit of everything. I'm a video editor. I'm, I'm a graphic designer. I'm a writer. <laughs> you know, so there's a lot of positions these days that will require this sort of uh, interdisciplinary type of approach to the industry. And, and especially in game development, I don't think it's really any different in that, in that regard. Um, you know, so with internships, obviously, you're, you're going to get exposure to that. Uh, so you're not only going to learn while you're there and not only going to make connections and networking opportunities, but you're going to learn a lot about what goes into those, those positions. Um, and you're going to have just access to so many people to ask questions uh, and really pick their brains. Um, and so what you see on the screen right now is partly the fact that we're, we're, we're kind of trying to change the narrative a little bit with, you know, you're, you, you hear me always use the word internship, but there's really so many opportunities out there to get experience, to get education and meet people and network without necessarily being called an internship. Um, sometimes a part-time job, entry-level position, apprenticeship, on-the-job training, volunteers. Um, you know, I even look at, so um, when some of you guys mentioned, I know, you know, Jared, you mentioned like, you know, Doom Eternal and Mike mentioned, you know, Resident Evil. A lot of these big games uh, have like public beta tests, right? Where you can, you know, as a, as a consumer, just as a fan, sometimes get to test these games early. And sometimes they're like, you know, these public beta tests that they'll put out on, you know, X, you know, Xbox or, or, or Sony or out on PC or something like that. And pretty much everybody has access to. And then sometimes they're limited in closed betas. Those are excellent insights and first steps into just the gaming industry, right? Where you can get hands-on on a game, maybe get access to a private message board or forum where you can post bugs that you've found. Like, believe it or not, you guys are part of that development team at that point, right? You are getting experience and anytime you're doing something like that, if you post, a, a, if you get access to a beta uh, or even a demo and you discover a bug, document that, right? I mean, post it into one of the, the, the message boards for that company, screenshot that thing, especially if you get a reply back and boom, there's some contribution that you can now put in a portfolio or you can share in an interview. Uh, you can bring up uh, to, to somebody that you maybe want to internship for in the future. And again, that stuff is, is free. You know, that stuff that's just out there and available for you guys to take advantage of. Um, you know, if you're looking to get into game design and uh, you're playing around with uh, different, you know, engines like Unity or the Unreal Engine, I mean, a lot of these things are free for college students. So take advantage of that stuff. Um, tinker, play around, develop things. Um, there's a student right now that uh, just got an internship for, I think it's, I can't remember if it's the fall or for the summer, um, but one of the things they asked them to do in the interview, uh, well, leading up to the interview, was to create a level in Roblox. They wanted to see what he could do in there to just kind of show his development skills. Um, and again, that very, I don't know if you, anybody's ever played Roblox. My daughter plays Roblox. I, I detest it, <laughs> but that's my own opinion on it. Um, but it is a way for people to start developing things, right, and, and content. And, um, and so that was just something, obviously that's free. They, they could say, hey, we just want you to create something in there, show us what, what you can do with this limited amount of time. Um, but that is experience and that is stuff that he can now put in his portfolio and say that he's, he's done this even for an interview. So any type of experience you can get, let's utilize it, right? Let's capitalize on it. Uh, and again, that's stuff that I can work with you guys individually too, right? I know sometimes you're like, well, where do I get started with this stuff? Where do I look? You guys can always reach out to me. Uh, I know I put my email in the chat earlier. Um, where you guys, if you want to make a one on one appointment with me to talk about some of this stuff more in depth, I'd be happy to do that. We can make a Zoom appointment. I have campus hours too. I am on campus certain days of the week. We can make in person appointments if you prefer that. Uh, so there's a lot of different things we can do in that regard. Uh, but when it comes to internships in college, there's obviously a couple different things you guys can do. Um, Credit and non-credit. So all of you guys that are in the digital media program, you probably have noticed that there is an internship class that you guys will have to take before you graduate. I highly recommend starting with me earlier on that so we can start planning for it, developing that resume. Again, I'll let you have the elevator speech and stuff and really kind of looking at what you want to do for the internship. So we're not kind of trying to do that this semester before. You know, it's always good to start early if we can to start kind of, you know, looking at those things. Um, but, you know, again, that may be not the only internship that you do. Some students will do an internship before they even do the credit internship class. Uh, and then oftentimes many students will go on and do another internship even after they've done the class that the internship class that's a requirement. Um, my little sister who just graduated from UF a few years ago uh, did three internships when she was in college, right? So during most of the year, so like from 
August, like late August to about the end of April, she worked on campus, worked, you know, part-time while she was going to school. Uh, I think, you know, she worked at the student union. She worked in the library, a couple of different student assistant type jobs, uh, worked at Publix for a while and stuff too. So a lot of, you know, typical college jobs, part-time while she's trying to go to school. But every summer she, she said, I want to make a commitment to try to do an internship every summer. And of course, you know, her big brother definitely encouraged that. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, her sophomore year, she did it, her first internship, and then she did one her junior year, and then her senior year. Uh, and each one built on each other. Like the first internship she did, she was an engineering major. The first internship she did had nothing to do with engineering. She was basically an office assistant. And she's like, is this really an internship? But I'm like, well, yes, because they're calling it an internship. <laughs> but you, she did get access to kind of talk with some of the engineers that worked at the company. She just wasn't doing anything hands-on. But she get to, did get to shadow a little bit. She got to ask some questions here and there. So she really did get some insight and she did get some education out of it. Plus, she got to put internship now on her resume with a company. And that helped her land the internship the next summer along with, you know, taking more classes. But that was an engineering internship. And it was a paid and a good paying internship. And then that turned into the next internship, which eventually turned into a job. The, the third place she interned with offered her her job, which she's now been at for about three, four years now. Um, so again, that's not, I'm not going to say like, that's going to happen to everybody. They're always going to follow that same exact path, but that's typically what employers are thinking of when they bring in interns, they're thinking about, okay, well, this is a way for us to test you out. You know, some, some places bring in interns because they're directly looking to hire. And then other times they're bringing in interns because it's mutually beneficial, right? You bring coming in with some skill sets. They're, they're there to teach you some stuff and it's a great opportunity for them to impart knowledge on you and for you to contribute to their team. So uh, they're obviously looking to get out of it, you know, just as much as you're looking to get out of it and stuff too. Um, so when it comes to credit internships, obviously, for, again, if you're in the digital media program, eventually we will be working together because I am the internship coordinator for the digital media program uh, and helping you guys get registered for your internship class, uh, but doing all the things before that to get you guys ready for the internship class, right? So looking at what you guys want to do and trying to get some experience. And uh, again, the resume, elevator speech, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so just real quick, uh, typically for you guys, the internship class is a one credit internship class. Most of you only need the one credit, which means that we'd have to find an internship for at least 60 hours or some kind of work-based learning. Again, that doesn't have to be called internship, but something that's going to get you at least 60 contact hours. Most of the time people go way above and beyond that because most places typically require more than 60 hours for an internship. It just kind of depends. Depends on where you're at and where you're going. Um, industry, all that kind of stuff. Um, some students do need more than one credit, but like I said, that's usually something uh, case by case. I'll work with you, kind of look up your record and see what you guys need for the internship class. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to do like, all these poll questions with you guys, but um, you know, internship, we, there is an internship page at St. Petersburg College that you guys can go on. You can see your, your program checklist. Uh, you'll see dates for when you need to apply by to take your internship class. So there isn't actually a small survey slash application to, to, to be eligible to take the internship class. And that partly is there just to make sure you guys are meeting with me beforehand. So typically if we've talked beforehand, you'll know all of this stuff. There's no need to go to the website because I'm going to tell you all of this and I'm going to share everything <laughs> that I've got with you guys. Um, but again, if it's three months from now and you're just like, oh, wait, who, who is that guy that came to my class? Uh, you can find all my information on the website, uh, again, under the internship section. Uh, Jared, did you have a question? Sorry if I missed your hand there for a second. Oh, uh, I just was thinking that this is some really important information that I want to keep on uh, hand for later. I just want to know if I can have a copy of the recording for this, uh, you know, this uh, Zoom class once it's done. Uh, I don't know if we're recording it, but I mean, all the presentation stuff I can send over to your professor. Actually, I'm recording. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah. Try to remember to record every class to, to post for, for availability afterwards because there's a lot of times that stuff is harder to miss on Zoom. <laughs> you know, your voice is pretty staticky. I can't hear it. Professor Scholz, uh, I couldn't hear you. It was like, the speakers were all like staticky.
Well, I was just saying I try to record every every class just because um, with Zoom, especially if something happens where you have internet connection issues and you drop off that way and try to post them. I've been going through posting and um, just trying to set everything up for it. Um, and so just kind of wrapping up stuff that you're seeing on the screen, when I mentioned non-credit internship, you just heard me talk about credit internship and how you'll be doing that before you graduate where you're going to be interning or doing some kind of work-based learning, but also getting college credit at the same time. You'll be taking an internship class that has a professor. There are so many internships that, that don't require that too. And you may do a second internship that is non-credit. When I didn't, when I talked about mine, you know, doing an internship when I was at USF, that wasn't for credit. That was just me saying, hey, I probably should do some kind of internship or get some kind of experience before I graduate. Uh, when I mentioned my little sister doing three internships, none of those three internships were for credit. They were all just her going out and trying to find experience before she graduated. Now, we've embedded them here at SPC because we see how impactful they can be. So every single workforce degree at SPC, so all of our AS degree programs, all the bachelor degree programs, there's an internship class for all of them. And some of them are required, like all of our AS degree programs, they're all required. So all of our cybersecurity majors, all of our hospitality and tourism majors, environmental science majors, they're required to take this internship class before they graduate, partly because the state of <laughs> Florida says, hey, we want your students getting experience before they graduate. Uh, and two, we just see the benefit in it. You know, um, you're learning a ton of great stuff here at the college, but we need to be able to make sure we can put that into practice and make sure you guys are lined up to make the right connections and meet the right people to get those jobs. And so having an internship class component, yeah, for some it's kicking and screaming, like, why are you making me do this? But really, if you think if you try to look at the bright side of it is that it's only gonna help you. This is only gonna be an opportunity for you to, to grow professionally, to meet some great contacts and to learn, just to learn a lot, you know? Uh, if you get anything from it, it's just going to be some great contacts and references that maybe you can use to help land the thing that you really are excited about. So uh, ideally, I would want you to be doing something you're excited about for the internship class, but I realize that's that's not always possible, right? Your first internship sometimes might not always be the dream internship, but that's definitely what our goal is. You know, we definitely want to help you get there. Okay, um, and so real quick, kind of wrap it up. I want to make sure there's some, some Q&A time at the end here. Uh, some of the things that obviously we look for, so when, when an employer posts an internship at the college, whether that's through Hire SPC Titans, which is our online job board, or if you see me, you probably have seen multiple emails from me <laughs> get sent out about internship opportunities. Um, we typically do some of this vetting process with the employers because we want there to be some response, especially if it's a credit internship. Obviously, the non-credit stuff, there's, my hands are tied as far as what can I can make an employer do. But for ones that are credit, uh, we want there to be that feedback loop. We want there to be ideally maybe some kind of, you know, expert mentor there that can kind of help, you know, impart some wisdom on you guys. But definitely a good feedback loop, definitely some good um, instruction. Uh, again, even if it's, like I said, sometimes our, you know, like our video production students, they may go work and do some freelance stuff for their internship class and they're the expert. But at least they're getting that experience of negotiation. Right, they're getting that experience of um, how much my time worth, you know, how, much, how long does this take? What's the back and forth? If you know you don't, the client doesn't like the final product, and how can I go and and change that? So you're, you're still getting some really good experience out of it. Um, and so just to talk about how you get the internships, again, this is where I recommend meeting with me. Um, you'll see on here. There's things that I would love to start working with you guys on when you're zero to 15 credits, 15 to 30, 30 to 45. But if you're finding yourself like, hey, <laughs> I'm at 55 credits and I'm graduating this summer, please still come and see me. Let's start chatting. Um, we can really do a lot of work in such a short amount of time to get you ready for whatever you're trying to do next. Okay. Um, so there's, there's no bad time to get started. Okay. And so this sheet here, what you see uh, is something I'm going to email your uh, professor to upload. This is what I was talking about earlier about how we've got the elevator speech kind of up here, this, this general student call script. Um, some, it'll give you some idea of some of the questions you may get, uh, some general information on how you can get in touch with me too. Again, I'm gonna have my contact information directly, um, but just some useful tips and best practices. This is something we just created within the last uh, couple months that, that it's really useful for students to kind of glance at. It's, again, it's not all encompassing, but it's a lot of, a lot of good situations on there 
uh, even when it comes down to interview stuff. Some, some brief things that can help you out with that as well. Uh, Hire SPC Titans, you heard me just mention, is our online job board. It's also where we post all of our workshops, um, meet and greet with employers. Uh, just tonight, I don't know if you've ever eaten at Slice uh, Pizza Bar. Uh, they have like 40 positions that are open, everything from management positions to part-time server positions. And so we hosted them tonight in a, in a uh, session, a live session where you could come and meet directly with them and get hired on the spot. <laughs> so we do a lot of stuff like that where we're partnering up with employers, um, bringing them to you guys, uh, even if it's just to talk about LinkedIn or to talk about professional networking. Uh, so you can find all that stuff and hire SPC Titans as well. Okay, uh, then <laughs> finishing, this was our schedule for the spring as far as our Wednesday workshop series. Uh, you can see the one we had today with our social media manager with social media and Zoom etiquette. Uh, the last one, which is kind of more just like a fun one <laughs> next week is relaxation in the workplace. Uh, one of our career services team members is licensed and certified in uh, meditation and yoga practices. She has like, she actually has a side business outside of the college she does this stuff with. If you're looking for ways to find some relaxation in your day, I highly recommend checking that out. <laughs> um, and then just to kind of finish up here, just some pictures of networking, getting yourselves out there at the opportunities that we're gonna to present to you guys. Like I said, I know the last year has been hard. Zoom, it's a lot, of, it's a lot more difficult to try to um, network in this type of format, but trust me, there are tons of different ways uh, to do that. Okay, there's, there's a, um, so many different, you know, as far as, uh, you know, video, get togethers and Zoom networking opportunities. Um, all the things that we do, like these workshops, they're all through Zoom right now, but uh, you know, the fall we're expecting things to kind of be a little bit more back to normal, um, where we are gonna have probably more campus-based events, typical type job fairs. We're just still gonna do the Zoom stuff too, but now we're gonna do both. You know, And I think you're gonna find that really a lot of businesses and industries are gonna be taking that same approach. Um, so if you, the more comfortable you guys can be in these settings, but also in person settings too, and diversify that skill set, the better off you'll be. Um, that kind of wraps up most of my internship stuff that I wanted to share with you guys. But again, I think the main takeaway would be for you guys to know who I am and how to get in contact with me. Uh, so please feel free to reach out, uh, email, phone, love to, to chat with you guys. But I'd love to just kind of open it up right now for the last few minutes of class to see if you guys have any questions for me. Yeah, Joaquin. Um, I have a couple questions. I'll try. Oh, they're not too uh, All right. big questions. Um, I was just wondering, um, how do you think it's more important for me after I finish my associates with SBC to go for a bachelor's degree or go for more internships? Good question. So remind me again, you were looking to get into the animation field, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So with, with that type of industry, it's, it's not required that you have a bachelor degree, okay? But, but what I can tell you from a standpoint of, of most, not say most, a lot of employers is that the bachelor degree will help open doors, okay? Now, internships and getting experience along the way, so whether you're not, you're like, right after you finish your associate degree, if you're just like, I'm not sure about the bachelor degree still yet, I kind of want to maybe take a little time out, say, yeah, go do another internship, maybe one or two, get some experience. Um, I've had students that have finished the AS degree program and just boom, started going to, went to work. You know, uh, there are opportunities. You don't need to have a bachelor degree to break into this industry. But there are a lot of places, especially maybe bigger companies, that may have that as like an entry point, right? Where it's like a checklist on something that says, okay, anybody that applies here, if they don't have a bachelor degree, they're not even getting looked at. Um, and so that's just the realization for some industries that and especially with some businesses, that's just how they narrow down their applicant pool too. You know, they're just like, because sometimes what, what a bachelor degree will show to them is that, okay, this person's dedicated, right? They're continuing their education. They, they want to have that sort of growth mindset. They're constantly learning to better themselves. They want to learn as much as they can. Uh, so it, it's, that's what college is to a lot of people. It's this long commitment, right? You're, you're spending a lot of money. You're learning a lot of things. It's, it's this commitment to education and to bettering yourself. Um, but I think if you can show that with experience, some places will value that just as much, if not more so, if you have that experience. So worthwhile, meaningful, relevant experience can be just as impactful, I think you'll find. I know that's, that seems like a very vague answer to your question. I'm sure you're probably just like, oh, just tell me what I, what I should do. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, but I think you'll find too, and again, whether that's you know, here at SPC or you're transferring somewhere else, you'll, you'll definitely find opportunities, especially even more so when you get into your bachelor degree program. Um, a lot of employers like to recruit from bachelor degree programs. Because again, they're finding people that just, they've been honing their skill set longer. They've, they've got more of that, that idea of dedicated to education and stuff too. Um, but if you can find the right opportunities and right entry, that first internship is, man, if that's a catalyst to something else, run with it. Yeah, don't, don't let yourself get slowed down because you want to go get a bachelor degree. Some place you get, you get in with might have some kind of tuition reimbursement program where they'll say, hey, while you're working here with us, go get your bachelor's. We'll help pay for it. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes, sometimes that's a real, real thing. So um, I would say, yeah, can work with me. Don't be a stranger. Connect with me. Um, and we'll kind of stay in communication through the whole process. So when those opportunities arise, I'll be like, boom, Bucky, this is your catalyst. Let's run with this. <laughs> let's go. Or for like, hey, man, let's let's you know, let's look at this bachelor degree that because maybe it's they've got some really great networking connections and maybe you know, ninety percent of the people that come out of this program are landing jobs in their field. You know, that that's a great incentive to maybe consider that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I did have one more question. Where are we? Um, I was just wondering how common are paid internships? Great question. Um, I've definitely seen a rise in paid internships. Okay. Um, I would still say it's, and again, this sounds vague, like 50, 50, but to be honest with you, that's probably close to where it's at. But I think you'll find that there's a lot more paid internships because people are realizing that students don't want unpaid internships. And so they realize that they want to get good students, they need to offer pay, you know? Um, now I think there can still be meaningful, great experiences that are unpaid. Um, you know, my internship that I talked about when I was a senior, was an unpaid internship. I mean, at the time I was working part-time at the St. Fidel house, going to school and doing this internship that was probably about 25 hours a week. And it was driving me crazy, but I, I was valuing so much of what I was doing. You know, I knew this was going to be great for me just to get in that experience and meeting those right people. And so I tell students like, it might be an unpaid internship, but if it's exactly what you're looking for with the right company, right people, the right type of opportunity, can you swing it? You know, can you can you swing a three month internship or you know maybe 10, 15 hours a week doing an unpaid internship if it's going to get you the right connections or get you the right experience or foot in the door? Um, but there's a lot more paid internship these days, especially with bigger companies. Um, they're planning for that now because they realize it's like it's a talent pipeline. If we can get them in for an internship, we may be able to find the next hire. You know, so uh, and they realize and we we tell this employers. I tell this. I feel like I. I I go blue telling this to employers when they post something, they're just like, hey, we haven't really got any applicants. I'm like, you paid? No, bingo. <laughs> you know, it's not yeah. surprising that you're not getting, you know, especially at SPC, because I tell them like, you know, our student population, 75 to 80% of you guys work while you're going to school. And so for you to go and do an unpaid internship is not always realistic, you know? So um, I tell them that. I said, we'll still advertise your unpaid internship and maybe it will be the right experience for the right student, but it might not be a right experience for a lot of our students. So, um, but yeah, long answer to your question, a lot more paid internships, especially over the last five years that I've seen, definitely. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate that. Nope. Yeah, Garrett. So uh, I guess Joaquin actually uh, sort of like touched on what I was already going to ask, but uh, like, I, how would I go about finding a paid internship if I needed to? Because uh, I, really i really kind of need the extra income like coming into my life and uh you know i don't think i can afford an unpaid inter- internship sure yeah i mean the nice thing obviously about paid internship is that they're usually advertised um it's, it's rare like so obviously you know, when i reached out to this company and says you know hey do you guys offer internships and they're like whoa yeah we could kind of start an internship program they didn't have like a budget plan for that so it wasn't paid but a lot of places that are offering paid internships they're going to advertise and they're gonna advertise through our platform, hire us PC Titans, they're gonna advertise maybe through LinkedIn. Really what I coach when it, when it comes to internship searching and for job searching is that we need to be everywhere because some employers may only post in Indeed, some may only post in Glassdoor, some may only post on internship to, internship.com or only on their website. So we really kind of have to look and be smart as far as where we're finding these things. And, Trust me, sometimes searching for an internship or job can feel like a full-time job. So it's about being smart with it, right? Like setting up alerts, like doing searches and then having maybe things sent to your email once a week. Saying, hey, either here's all the new 
paid internships that meet your search criteria for the week. That way you're not out there every single day trying to search and search and search. We're being strategic with our searching, right? Strategic with our networking and trying to find those opportunities. Um, so Jared, I'd, yeah, I'd love to set up an appointment with you. We can kind of look at that stuff and kind of where to start looking for paid internships and what you want to be doing. Um, I think the great thing about this industry, uh, especially in the, the degree you guys are pursuing, if you can look at a silver lining from this epidemic is that a lot of things are remote now. A lot of internship opportunities in your field, uh, a lot of job opportunities. People are realizing we don't need to have people in Seattle for this. We don't need to have people in uh, San Francisco. You could be doing this from anywhere, right? I mean, I think Microsoft is still primarily like their whole workforce practically is working from home, uh, like 70% or something like that. So I think a lot of companies are realizing, hey, we can, we can still be productive. You know, it still takes some learning, but you know, we can do this. So there's a lot more opportunities that are online than they just that weren't there before. That's good to know. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Good question. Anybody else? I miss them in the chat. <laughs> yep. Uh, oh, and it looks like I forgot when I logged off. That probably took my contact information with it. So let me just real quick put it in here in the chat again. My email address, that's my phone number. I am primarily at this at the Seminole campus. Um, I, I can travel. So if you if you prefer to meet me in person at another campus, I can do that. Um, I'm on campus right now, Mondays and Wednesdays and sometimes Fridays. And then the rest of the time, I can do a Zoom session anytime though. Tuesdays, Thursdays, like do Zoom sessions from the campus and stuff too. So if it's just easier, more convenient for you guys to do it this way, I'd be happy to meet with you guys via Zoom um, or, you know, person on campus. Uh, I typically stay away from like phone appointments. I just don't think they're as personal. We don't get to really know each other as much, but I can do phone appointments too. So, but whatever you guys prefer, uh, like I said, love to hear from you guys, whether it's tomorrow or six months from now, don't be a stranger and definitely feel like you can reach out to me, okay? Saving your information in my school OneDrive. I'm sorry, what was that, Jared? I said I'm saving your contact information in my school's OneDrive in a Word document so that I can always have it. Perfect, man. So I've, also, I've also posted that out in the, the section in our course shell that has that I've got the presentations and stuff. I've got a link um, that says contact Jacob that's got his email and his phone as well in it. Great, thank you. All right. Um, any other questions for me? I know I'm kind of taking a little bit more time than I was allotted. So uh, uh, definitely want to thank you guys for your time tonight. Great questions. Great interaction. I really appreciate it. Any no more questions? So just um, just real quick, and I'll kind of real quick do a quick screen share just to. Uh, there we go. Um, as you see, I was I keep I keep on referring. I set up there's a um, separate section that's kind of under the guest speaker tonight for tonight, where um, I've got the elevator speech presentation. I've also got a, um, another presentation that Jacob had used um, last year when he spoke to our class that was kind of helpful with some stuff. And then most importantly, I've got his contact information, which has name, um, his email to contact him, and then the phone number. Um, so if, and. Obviously, that'd be the best best way to try to get a hold of them. So, if there's no other questions, comments, or anything like that, um, I will see you guys next week. Um, next week, we're kind of just going to have a quick discussion about the future of gaming and kind of sit there and go through um, some of the theories that people had in the book about where the future of gaming is going. Since um, based on the age of the book we're in the future that a lot of these people are talking to so we could see kind of how accurate their guesses were um so it's just an interesting way to wrap up the course so um if nobody's got any other questions or comments or anything like that um thanks again jacobs for coming out um always a great um great and informative um presentation about really you know working towards careers and it kind of fits in with a lot of the stuff we've been covering in the last three weeks um towards building you know in the last section of um game development and design awesome great thank you thanks for having me yep thank you yep. Thanks, see you guys next week see you
I just want to say I'm looking forward to the next chapter. Mm -hmm. I get to thank him. <laughs>